time. Oh man, all my stuff is in here. You guys can see all my messy. What's up everyone? It's your girl Fantastic Frankie and I am so excited for a very special spoiler review of Monkey Man. I have two guests with me today so we can dissect this incredible film that went way beyond my expectations and we're just going to really break it down and discuss all of the things that we've been seeing, things that we enjoy, and we're going to have fun doing it. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it and start with our first guest here, Shiv Reddy. Um, Shivery, I love, I love your name. Um, <laughs> welcome. Please tell everyone about your platform, who you are, what do you love? Hi, uh, my name is Shiv. I am a film and TV content creator, mostly just doing reviews and little breakdowns, especially if it involves a lot of Indian cultural representation. Um, a lot of my content focuses on representation overall. Uh, I am a really big proponent of seeing more diverse stories in Hollywood, and I want to be a part of that change. So, yeah. And you're doing it. Also, you got <laughs> to touch Dev Patel, which is like... <laughs> Luckiest girl in the world. Does he smell nice? I, have to know. <laughs> I could not tell you. My senses were not working when I walked into that room, other than maybe my brain. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't remember anything. Honestly, I blacked out, and the only like recollection I have is the video that was filmed. So, yeah, <laughs> you held it together, man. I'm, I'm very proud of you. You did it for all of us, um, and. My second guest today is so one of you guys, actually, I've never had him on the podcast, but I've done a panel with him. He's incredible. He's very funny. Um, and I really wanted him on here because he's so informative and he'll keep me at bay because I've never wild around him. And that is my boy, Neves. What? Uh, what do you mean you're never wild I'm around never crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I got to be good around Neves. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, listen. I, I, I'm always about the ruckus. <laughs> I, I, I am down to go. But thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to to talk about this with you guys. Absolutely. Um, well, I always like to start a quick review. Um, just getting your initial thoughts of the movies. What did you anticipate when you saw it? And what did you think when you finally got the chance to watch? I, I can start with you, Shiv. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like when, you know, the trailer first came out, I knew that there was going to be some type of influence from, you know, Hinduism and Hindu gods like Hanuman, specifically all the imagery that you see. I just didn't really know how exactly he was going to integrate that into what seemed like a very gory action flick. And I just walked out feeling so shocked with how much he managed to stuff in this movie that we haven't really seen in pretty much any South Asian, you know, related story in the past. Um, it felt, it feels new. It feels fresh, like a perspective that we have just like never even thought about. Um, even though I've grown up understanding who these characters and this mythology is all about, it's just so refreshing seeing it presented in this light. Love that. And Neves, what, what were your thoughts before you saw the movie and after you saw it? Yeah, so when I first saw the movie, I saw a lot of comparisons to John Wick. So that's kind of like what I was expecting. And then when I watched it, I'm like, no, this, this, I mean, it obviously pays homage to John Wick, but it's so different than any of those genres. And people think that John Wick created this genre, but it really didn't. They've been around since like the Westerns, you know, the Revenge Story, the Charles Bronson Death Wish, uh, Taken. These have been around for a long time. So people were giving this the, oh, it's just an Indian uh, John Wick. And when you watch it, it's nothing like that. Like the story is so rich, not just in like nuance and storytelling, but also in culture. And then you also get to see that like there's not that much gunplay in the movie. It's a lot of like martial arts and it's very different than a John Wick. It's just a guy in a suit fighting. It's really the only thing that's similar. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think it blew me away. I think I had good expectations for the action, but I didn't realize how much I would actually enjoy the story. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned John Wick because same. I think the color style and the directing is the only thing that I got from John Wick. Um, and even once you get 
closer to the second fight scene, I definitely didn't feel John Wick. It actually reminded me more of The Raid. Have you ever seen The Raid? Yes, I love The Raid. The Raid yeah. is one of my favorite movies of all time. That's the movie. I was like, why hasn't anyone brought up The Raid when they're talking about this film? But I agree with Shiv. I And both of you, honestly, I came in like, all right, I'm going to see this guy um you know just fighting beating up people and he's going to be the best and then like the first fight out like when we're first introduced to him it kind of like i don't know I, I felt like it it showed what i was thinking about like he looked very cool um he's in the ring he's wearing this monkey mask and then immediately he's like getting his ass whooped <laughs> you know what i mean and i was i was like this is not what i'm thinking it's going to be you know what i mean and I'm glad, I'm glad that it was like that. Um, so let's start diving into the film and the things that we notice. It starts off with the story of Haruman. Haru, Haruman? Haruman? Am I saying it correctly? Yeah, Hanuman. Yep. Hanuman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I love that it starts off kind of giving us a crash course in a way that didn't feel like exposition. It's like she's telling this grand story and maybe it's because I actually didn't know what was going on. And so I love just seeing that parallel and then it going to him in the ring looking very cool, even though he loses in this fight. <laughs> uh, but I really loved it. What were your thoughts on the intro? Uh, I think it's super gritty, like just from the start, um, bringing us into like a very like underground level and really setting this precedent of like, this is the side of India that maybe you may know of, but you're probably going to get again, a like fresh new perspective of, and also a firsthand perspective of, because you learn that he's this underprivileged kid. Um, and then you start to like piece together his story. Um, but also kind of mirroring the image of Hanuman, um, being, you know, uh, somewhat, uh, I can't think of the word right now, but he was punished. There we go for, uh, you know, reaching for the mango that is, um, that is supposed to be the sun, uh, and kind of like understanding kids backstory, uh, because of that as well. And has, he has burned hands and all of that. Um, it was just like such a cool, like parallel imagery to start off the film with. Yeah, absolutely. I thought, what, what do you, what do you what was the protagonist's name? I I heard him called a lot of things. The only one I caught was Bobby. Yeah. But Bobby I and Kid. Are and the only kid. Thing. Yeah. So the, was the, was that <laughs> the point like for him not to have a name? Yeah, it's kind of like they just remain in the shadows, like they're anonymous, they're not to be seen, not to be heard of kind of thing. So I think he's also named Kid because he also starts off really juvenile and like thinks that he can whoop all of these people's asses, but in actuality, he's like super inexperienced and like cannot. So <laughs> I, I thought it was a bit of a uh, fight club reference where they don't actually ever name the Tyler Durden. Like, like mm -hmm. his name is never shown. So I thought it was a little bit of an homage to, to that, to never say his name. Oh, wow. I didn't even think I liked that. I didn't realize it until I went to write for the review. I was like, what it what is his name? <laughs> and then when I saw it again, I was like, they don't really say his name. Even Bobby is a nickname um, that they kind of give him with kid. But I, I did think that I'm going to call him kid. Um, I think that he was for the streets was the first thing that I thought of immediately. <laughs> and lo I love seeing that scene where he tries to get the wallet so he can infiltrate uh, that, I guess the club. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just to watch that person like pretend that they have an ailment because he knows he's going to be invisible, um, invisible. And then seeing that wallet pass through so many hands, I thought it was really cool. And him trusting that the wallet would get to him, you know? Yeah. I think that scene was supposed to be like a, a tribute to Danny Boyle uh, and Slumdog. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's like something identical to it in Slumdog. It does feel very like similar, especially like pairing the music with that type of sequence. Um, very like fast pace and like on to the next, on to the next. Uh, so I think that he mentioned that in some interview, I think, but yeah. Um, we have a, a quote here. Um, I think the idea of him not having the stated name resonates more with the idea that he's an embodiment of the concept of revenge. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So, especially since we see the revenge doesn't work until he's avenging 
the people when he when he goes out on his own and he's like i want to do something my, for myself and my own personal gain he fails horribly and that's something that i really enjoyed because even when he came back he was a totally different man yeah, I think because, you know, when he first did it, he did it for revenge. And then when he comes around and does it for the second time and he gets an idea of seeing how the uh, politicians and everybody are treating everything, he came back, but from the position of justice instead of revenge, which mm -hmm. I think is why it goes better the second time. Yeah, um, this film had such incredible, I don't want to use the word world building, but more as in... I, I felt like I was getting thrown into a culture I knew nothing about. And I had to, in the way that if I was watching like Dune or something else where I didn't know the culture, I had to use context clues in the way that everyone interacted with the culture to understand what was going on in terms of the food, the way they were speaking to each other, the languages, the, di um, the caste system amongst themselves. And I felt like this film was really good in showing us and not telling us. Um, and one of the biggest things that I noticed, which is not quite the culture, but something that they showed and not told us, was Queenie, who was one of the villains um, who was sex trafficking, when he comes into the hotel to speak to her and get a job, she's looking through a catalog of little girls to traffic. And that was so powerful for me to be so subtle to say like, you know, there there's sex work happening there. There's so many different levels of crime and just terrible things happening, but they're not, he didn't have a conversation with someone saying it. He just like, let it play out. Yeah. I think overall the film has like very minimal dialogue, um, which I think my critique of, of that is more so that the writing that there is, it feels a little bit too on the nose sometimes, like very literal at, at points, but I love the visual storytelling. I think that that's where he has like established his style as a director more than anything in this movie is that it's it's a lot of show don't tell, um, which I think a lot of people could <laughs> learn from because we see so much exposition in action movies specifically. Yeah. And then Go ahead, go ahead. I'm going to say like that also helps with the character, right? Because we see him as this stoic, silent, strong type, and he's not just overly sharing, which kind of makes him a little bit like, oh, he's telling us all these things that he's going to do. And it lets him be a little bit like more badass by just like keeping it all inside. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't, I never anticipated this from Dev Patel. And I think it's because everything else I've seen him in, uh, you know, was a, lo a lot lighter than this. <laughs> And I felt like every scene that I saw him in this movie, he looked like he was about to cry. Like, look at his eyes here. Like, every time they close up on his face, it was anger. It was it, it was definitely anger, but it also looked like he was on the verge of tears, even when he wasn't pursuing, like, revenge. And it, it, was, it was just a level that I'd never seen Dev do, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I feel like it's also like that backstory. It's like constantly reminding you that this there's this trauma building, building, building. And then you finally get the flashback and you're like, okay, see, yeah, I get why he's like so <laughs> damn emotional uh, <laughs> over right. what's happening. <laughs> it, it, it consumes him basically, right? It's yeah. all he is. He's kind of like the Batman where he's just like, I only care about this one thing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. What were when you before you actually saw what his backstory was? Did you start to think of theories of what to do or like how he got those scars? Or am I the only person who does stuff? I was like, I oh, he probably got it like this or that. Yeah. Or this. <laughs> I didn't think about like the scars more so than the trauma. Um, there's a there's a Bumble movie, uh, which is another regional film industry in India. Um, it came out last called Jigathanda double x it's on netflix um it's a very similar story of like a forest indigenous group of people that get their land taken by police officers and politicians um obviously this story is not uncommon in india and that's why mm -hmm. it's surfacing in this story mm -hmm. um but i uh, i thought that that's kind of which direction this story was going to go in i obviously didn't pick this whole mom plot to be a part of it yeah uh, you never mess with a brown boy and his mom uh, i think we all know that <laughs> so um <laughs> But I think that's exactly why he chose it because it's such a relatable concept for so many watching it. Yeah. Yeah. What, one thing I noticed too is um, 
there are scenes where he's reacting and he's having a really hard time seeing the women in the club abused. And initially, particularly with this woman here, who is absolutely stunning. I need to find out this actress's name. Um, you know, she's being harassed and he's visibly upset. And I thought they were either related or he knew her in some type of way. And that's why he was reacting in that way. And then I realized he just, is empathetic. Like he, he, he's like, I hate the way these women are being treated here. And it really made me think like, what type of mind do I have that I immediately thought he must be related to this woman to be upset that she's being harassed, you know? We also noticed that he did see his mom be, you know, assaulted yeah. in a similar manner, which also was probably like uh PTSD True. for him. Yeah. 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 That was, they didn't even show much, but yeah. that was one of the most vicious and heartbreaking scenes I've ever seen in terms of like, and maybe it's because I knew he was up there um, just to see uh, how fierce she was and just like standing up to this man, knowing that she more than likely would die. It, it really resonated with me. Um, and it was the first time I realized the second time I watched it that we get to see her full face. Um, because she's this kind of ethereal figure that face is like obscured. We always see the top of her face, the bottom of her face, or like, it's just going in and out of focus. Um, but when she's on the floor lying down about to die, that's the first time you get a full on look onto her face. And it, it made me want to cry. You know what I mean? Um, which I'm like, why do I feel this way about a <laughs> action film? This is supposed to be John Wick. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I also want to add, if I can, really quickly about uh, the female character that you pulled up. Mm -hmm. um, so in the movie, her name's Sita. And mm -hmm. that's like very pivotal in the Hindu lore that this is based off of because she's the princess that gets captured um, in the story. And Hanuman is like the best friend that tries to find where she's being like held captive. Um, and in Monkey Man, that's at this club where all these elite people are at um, and the bad guys. So that's kind of why they don't have chemistry in this. It's like, they're not supposed to be romantically involved. Mm -hmm. um, it was like the right was reserved for her husband Ram to save her. And that's why we don't really get that figure in the story or like no nothing really happens between the two of them. But he obviously is really enraged by it because he sees that she's being held prisoner in some sense. Yeah. And she ends up saving herself, essentially, yeah. right? She's the one yeah. who kills her oppressor. And I was like, I, it felt, I felt a relief because I'm watching the kid, like, get his lick back. And this woman specifically, not that she didn't wrong him, but she wasn't who she he was after. And I'm like, man, he's going to take this moment away. And when she came up at the very ending and killed her, I was... I was like, yeah, just do. I was, I was happy for her. <laughs> so how did you guys feel about the first scene, the first action scene, which I realized doesn't happen for like 40 minutes um, when he finally brings up the courage to, um, to kill this man who's killed his mother. And we see him hesitate. We see him not ready to commit. Um, and then... I was not expecting that guy. I forgot this man's name, but the police officer to have Rana Singh. What's his name? <laughs> Rana Singh. Ra is that his actual name or no, the, uh, the character? Oh, the character's name. Okay. Um, I I didn't expect Singh to be that good of a fighter because once again, I'm applying the laws of John Wick. And normally the guy at the top that he's fighting, right? Uh, Theon Greyjoy or like Skarsgård or like just people who are giving the orders and are not fighters. But I was afraid for him when he was fighting. You know what I mean? Like there were, he was doing okay, but I'm like, he's about to lose this. What's the rest of the movie going to be about? Yeah, I think also what Neves brought up about the whole like uh, gunplay stuff and how this was so heavy handed with hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat um, really made a difference in the believability of both of their caliber of fighting. Like you could imagine that a police officer, especially in India that works with a lot of uh, you know street level crime or stuff like that, probably doesn't resort to a lot of gun violence. They usually just use their fists. 
Um, and I think that that's why it's so gritty. Um, and you see them just like constantly like wrestling each other basically for like two minutes straight. Yeah. Um, and then the fists are being, you know, laid in. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed how realistic that felt. Like it wasn't such a choreographed piece, like how you see maybe later on towards the climax, but it's also to show that he is an experienced, right? Like he's so afraid to even use the gun and he obviously can't even aim it right. Um, and that's why he's also so emotional, uh, even whipping it out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we forget as Americans that we're the only country that freely uses and practices with guns. Yeah. And that, like, <laughs> even the police, like you said, a police officer would be using his fist. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> but like that, that's what they're, that's what they're using. And when Queenie came out with the gun um, during that incredible scene towards the end and she starts shooting people, it was jarring because before then they were fighting with their hands. It was this yeah. all out brawl. So when the fight came in, it was genuinely shocking because people don't use guns like that. And I love that when he did try to acquire the, when he went to go buy the gun, John Wick is mentioned yeah. and the dog <laughs> is the one that brings the, the gun, the gun yeah. to him. So it, it, it was almost to me, it felt like a wink, like, yeah, Amer the, the gun thing is for you guys for the John Wick <laughs> shit, but I, I couldn't care less about it. Um, and it ends up being a burden for him. I feel like, like when he's fighting, he's worried about the gun more than he's worried about getting hurt. You know what I mean? He's worrying about someone else. There's two people now in there and he's worried about someone else grabbing that gun. Right. Yeah. For sure. That that scene was uh it reminded me of like the Mission Impossible scene with Henry Cavill in the bathroom where the yes. sinks are breaking and the toilets are breaking and they're going into the dookie water to get the gun. Like it was <laughs> it was wild. It was a very gritty version Gross. of that. And I I really, really was like, oh man, this is where it's getting started. Now the thing is like I really thought he was gonna put up more of a fight. So to see him not being able to hold his own so early on made the ascent so much better when he gets to fight at him at the end and you see the big difference. And I, I love the way they built that up. Yeah. 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 I, because we're so used to seeing the protagonist, an expert, a pro, like a prodigy, like they're just magically good at what they do. And in this case, he was not, there were people who were better. He just was crafty and, you know, was semi good at what he does and had a lot of resolve. Um, so I loved seeing him kind of glow up and I felt like he got bigger at the end of that training montage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, we I, noticed. I, <laughs> You're like, it wasn't just you, Frankie. <laughs> Uh, what I what I really love about that training montage is that they use the rhythm of the doll and the drums to yes. focus on his fighting, which is like his he knows how to fight. He just didn't have the rhythm. And then once yeah. he got the rhythm, uh, he was able to be even a bigger menace than before. Yeah. Yeah. This was actually my favorite person. Uh <laughs> Because they brought the vibes the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, super famous. Like, he's very talented. He's, like, won really? a bunch of Grammys. Yeah. Super, super famous. Um, wow. This was, this was one of my questions that I asked, Dave, um, because I was, I'm an Indian classical dancer, and I grew up, you know, dancing to very similar uh, drum rhythms. Um, and it reminded me of something that we, we do as students of, you know, kind of, like, battling between your footwork and the rhythm of the drum. Um, so I asked him, you know, like what was the inspiration behind it? And there's a, there's a, like a phrase called jugal bandi in India, where it's basically like uh, a competition of some sort between music and person. And, uh, it's just so cool knowing like the, the, like influence behind it and how he like very intentionally wanted it to feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, it definitely felt like he was dancing, especially seeing, um, everyone in was it a temple or was it a home that they it's were all in? It's it a was temple. a temple, right? Um, so watching the audience kind of react, I felt like I was watching the kid learn how to dance, like learn how to move, um, especially seeing him being encouraged by the drummer in that way where he's like, you could, you could stay on beat. Like you could do it. I can't dance. So I've been here where I'm like trying to catch that beat and it's really hard. <laughs> and everybody's like clapping and trying to get you on. So like, I felt like there was a little bit there, but maybe I was projecting. Uh, yeah. I do want to talk about uh, the temple and the women there because 
this to me was the most shocking part of the movie. Um, I there's a like not a throwaway line, but while the kid is in, I think, a restaurant, we hear our, in the news story, like they're talking about how they're rushing in on the trans community. And when they said it, I heard it and I was like, maybe I misheard it. Um, be, I just didn't think about that being an issue that would be brought up here, like in this film. And so when he wakes up in this temple and there are these like beautiful, you know, motifs around him, there's like this trans woman talking to him and talking to him about duality. It, it was a turn that I didn't even consider happening. Yeah. Um, at the very beginning of that temple sequence, when he wakes up, they show the the god of uh, half Parvati, half Shiva, which oh, is yeah. half male, half uh, female. And that's kind of supposed to signify, uh, you know, if you didn't know about the Hijra community before, which is India's third gender, then this is our way of saying that these are trans people. Um, they're obviously heavily discriminated against in India, just like they are around the world, unfortunately. Um, and I just thought like the incorporation, like I mentioned at the beginning, like it just shocked me that he managed to squeeze this in here when mm -hmm. there's Indian media that is so afraid to even talk about this, you know, like they wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole if they, if they tried. Um, and it's just like this beautiful risk that he thought was willing to take in, into incorporating it into this story. Yeah. And there's never a moment where he's like reacting negatively or surprised yeah. by the people in the temple. You know, like he he's concerned about being hurt and like, how does he go back on this plan? But even then, once he realizes like I need my moment to recover, he just go he jumps head first into the community. Um, and then for a second, I thought this is going to be just a subplot for awareness but then they show up to the club mm. and start and start <laughs> fighting in full regalia i yeah. <laughs> and they were the outfits were really elaborate too like they were shimmering and there's like blood splatter and i never thought that this it, it once again chip to what you were saying it felt like they were dancing right um just to see their skirts move and things like that and then yeah. like they club someone to death. It was, like... it, it was so good. Uh, the, the fact that we got two movies where uh, people are fighting in these outfits in, in the same year is crazy. Because if you watch Polite Society, that's another movie where you get to see martial arts in saris and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's really cool. And the fact that we got two this year was what's wild. I, I love that. That that's so it's um Shiv, have you ever worn a sari? Is it comfortable enough for you to to fight through <laughs> a bunch of people? Um, I have, I wore sorry to the premiere. Um, and I definitely hate wearing them. They're not comfortable <laughs> at all, especially to pee in. They're the worst. Um, mm -hmm. but they're actually wearing lengas, which are like separate attached. It's like a crop top and a skirt. So they're mm -hmm. like a little bit more, uh, movable. I feel like aerodynamic, mm -hmm. um, which is why you see them twirl and, and you get that movement. There's a shot right after that. Um, uh, it's aerial overhead and you just see like, they look like ninjas, like the way that they're running yeah. through. Oh my God. I thought it was so cool. Yeah. And that yeah. has some like religious significance too, right? The like, Hidras? No, the fact or that the like, he, he got an army because he's supposed to reference yeah. Hanuman. So right? yeah. So Hanuman um, in the story, after he finds out where Sita is at, he basically goes and tells her husband, like, this is where they're at. We got to go. And then he grabs his entire monkey army and Ram to like go attack Ravan the villain. Um, so I'm assuming that the Hijra community is supposed to be his like version of an army because they both help each other find their purpose. And did you get a chance to ask Dev, why did he choose the Hijra community? Like, the, it was just so beautiful and interesting and so unexpected yeah. um, to pick them as his army. But I, I mean, the, I... I think ahead. the question should be, why not, right? That should yeah, be the question sure. we should be asking for, for every movie. Yeah. 100%. Like, I, I didn't ask him, but I think someone else did on the carpet um, for an interview. And... Uh, it was it was to show that they're they're the most empowered people. They have they have to fight back just to defend who they are on a daily basis. Um, you know, we're we're constantly looking for our purpose. They found it, and now they're just trying to defend themselves. Um, and I think that that's obviously so beautiful in its own right. But again, even using them in an impactful way that makes them so empowered and like they're obviously uh, kicking ass in that scene. So it's like, there's just no question about their strength, both like internally and externally. Yeah. 
And I, I think he's not subtle in the way that he's mirroring just society and the things that he wants to say. And in that final fight where, well, the second to last final fight, um, where he's finally fighting Singh, most of it is shown um, overhead in the mirror. And I love that because it, it felt like, one, from when he was watching Singh kill his mother from above, I felt like I was now in his vantage point looking down, but also yeah. the duality of like, I'm not going to shoot you. I'm going to beat you to a pulp mm -hmm. the way that you, you know, you did to my mother. And I really love seeing that, that he gave everyone their just due and their right to like fight for themselves. So um, the same with... Um, what was her name? Sintra? Sita. 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 Um, Sita being able to kill her oppressor. Um, the the Hijas. Is that correct? Hijra. 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 There's an R in there. If, yeah. To be fair, I'm terrible with names. Period. Don't. You're trying <laughs> yeah. to have all the others. So I'm trying fine. really hard. But if, I can't say John Travolta. Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> or Cal. Cal. Like Cal Renner. So it's, it's not, I'm trying <laughs> This is an entirely different language. I don't expect you to know it. You're yeah. totally fine. Man, when I talk about anime, people get so mad. They're like, that's not how you say it. And I was like, I don't speak Japanese. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working really hard here. Uh, but yeah, just seeing them like really having their moment and him letting them have that moment, I thought was really great. Um, let's talk about the actual villain, which was... Um, uh, the guy who was like all kumbaya the entire movie, <laughs> okay, down to him having shoes that are like not supposed to kill bugs, and then he having shanks in both of them. Damn, <laughs> that, that's a good metaphor. <laughs> it's a good metaphor. I I really did uh, like the way I didn't think they would they would do this. In fact, I think he might have trouble getting this movie released in India because of how he approached the villain and some of the stuff. Like even uh, there's mentions of farmers and the mes uh, mention of the Muslim community, which are things that India is going through right now. And I was really surprised to, to see that. And it may cost him to have it come out in India, but for him to put something in there to make sure that people who are from marginalized communities are shown uh, in this way, I thought was really good on his part. Really? Yeah. Do you think sure. that he was representing any leader right now in India? I, I think there <laughs> I, I would say there's a good there is a very good uh, a chance there is. I don't um, I, I, I don't want to talk about it. I, I didn't want to put he on uh, y'all. Yeah, you know, like every everybody looks like Trump when I watch a movie now. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I was like, is this their Trump? Uh, there are definitely people so, with, with humble beginnings and coming out from religion and weaponizing religion. Uh, yeah. and, and this is uh, uh, for all cultures, right? We, we have it in like almost every country. So it's not it's just radical India. in every country. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's just um, how, how high they get into, uh, you know, <laughs> politics. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was a there was a, I think a save Muslims uh, or something like that a sign, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was like save Indian Muslims. It was like very specific. I, yeah. I don't I don't know why. Um, I will say uh, with Neeb's what Neeb's mentioned about the whole um, screening in India, like it's facing so much controversy because originally a trailer came out and there's that scene where the politician is speaking to everyone and they and Dave is like in the crowd, uh, surrounded by a bunch of people, and originally they had like orange flags orange clothing uh yep this one yeah uh so i think later in another trailer they edited it to be more red which you can kind of see in this photo mm -hmm. uh because orange is like their republican red like it's their conservative party color mm -hmm. and um to avoid people having the wrong idea like from the bat um, and it being like maybe portrayed as like anti-hindu they wanted to change the color um but there's obviously so much in the story that still remains that makes it seem, you know, identical to what's happening right now. Like Neve said, yeah. that you can't just like erase from the film because it's like yeah. quite literally the whole plot. Um, so I do think that it's not going to be shown in India. I have a very strong feeling. Really, feeling. you can yeah. color grade this. <laughs> you can't color grade the plot though. Like you, you can't, can't color grade. The plot. <laughs> 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 I just don't want them to miss out on such a peak film. Yeah. I, I, I like this scene because 
it was showing how dense India is. Um, and so he was able to go, he's a wanted man and he was able to hide out in the street um, with, with no problem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just hide amongst yeah. the people. Um, but I also love seeing all these people so like riled up and him just like, just wait till I fucking get upstairs. Oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> also, I wanted to mention, I, I, I might be mistaken, but we were talking about how they, they changed the colors and stuff. I think they also made the city they live in a fictional city. I don't think yeah. it's a real city in India. And I think that's for two reasons. One is because, you know, they don't want to be so on the nose about the politics that's happening. But also, they actually couldn't film in India. There's so many production yeah. issues that happened with this movie. Like cameras broke. Like they, they couldn't get in because of COVID. They have to film in a different country. Uh, and so I think that's how they kind of explain why like a lot of the people look asian in yeah. the movie because they're technically not in india really yeah I so it's, it's a fictional it, city yeah. yeah the city is called like yatana they say it a lot on like the news programming and like uh they're mostly indonesian actors so like even all of the hijra community you can see that like they i mean there are you know there's a nepali influence in india you see a lot more asian features of people in india too so it's not like it's like a, that big of a stretch um but also because of budget issues they had to reuse a lot of the same actors so when in that final climax sequence when he's fighting like a bunch of henchmen and then the elevator full of henchmen come they're mm -hmm. actually the same people they just like repurpose them and like yeah. put them in different oh. like uh maybe different facial hair like hats and stuff just to make it seem different and that's probably why you're getting raid redemption vibes because raid <laughs> redemption is also an indonesian movie so since this is being filmed in indonesia that might be why you're getting some of that yeah absolutely i also felt a heavy like bruce lee oh yeah influence um especially bruce lee slash quentin tarantino which is the same thing uh you know like kill bill type feeling when yep. all those like men in suits came out ready to fight after we thought that he had finished the hurdle yeah. um and then just a rush of people coming in um was comedic in a way but also just reminded me of like kung fu movies of the time yeah um and it, I, there were a lot of times that I'm like, I don't know if this is meant to be funny or not, but this is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I did. Do you have a lot of laughs in your theater when you watched it? No, people were really serious. I yeah, was laughing. I, I was laughing. Uh, well, me and my friends, um, the first time I, I went with friends, the second time I went by myself, the second time it was silent in there. But the first time I went with my friends, so we were able to make jokes, you know, about like Dev Patel me being hot or like anything <laughs> yeah. else. Like, or the guy not flushing the toilet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, why is there a boob in there? He he had time to flush. He came out not because he was concerned. He came out because he was done. And it really yeah. bothered me. <laughs> it really bothered me. That that seemed really bothered me. But um no, I there were times that I thought were really funny. I, I think that scene was funny. Um, I think the way he reacted when all those people came in was pretty funny. Um, when he kicked the guy and he just was down in one hit. Yeah. I so thought good. that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the guy who was speaking, the I don't know, the ringleader, um, was he from like New Zealand? Uh South Africa is what they oh, said. South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, and I also thought this scene was funny, um, which was pretty brutal, but the scene where he goes into the brothel. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it was a little bit of bold, right? It was brutal. Like he's biting off this man's nose, which I didn't know if I should laugh or not. Um, and just like the way he was screaming to me was comical. But then there were like some really serious moments, like him seeing a little girl in this brothel, right? And mm -hmm. like yeah. telling her to go. Um, but for the most part, I thought this entire scene was like anxiety inducing and really <laughs> funny. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because I watched it at South by and like obviously festival audiences are like primed for something else, you know, like they're totally OK, like yelling and and cheering when the hero does something great. But that's what makes it so much fun, because that's like equivalent to what it's like watching an action movie in India. They have like no bar in terms of. Oh, like, they're crazy. You, got, you can whistle, you can get up and cheer, you can bring confetti and throw it like it is such a wild experience. And it's just like that's the energy that I felt like the movie deserved. But then like when you're watching it in a theater, like an AMC in like a suburb, no one's going to be doing that. So like, you're just sitting there quietly like, okay. Yeah, you got to pull up to Harlem. 
That's what you mean. <laughs> you gotta come up to the hood ship. That's what you play it. You play it. You go to Beverly Hills. That's the. <laughs> I, I grew up in Newark. That's the audience I'm. I'm yeah. used to. <laughs> yeah, we. I've never seen confetti. That's pretty lit. I mean, we've thrown popcorn. It's sad though. It's sad for all, the workers. <laughs> all the viral videos of Avengers are all from India. Like the ones where like <laughs> he picked up the hammer, and when they go on your left, and the crowd goes crazy. Those are all from India really yeah. we there's a movie that came out last june it was called the uh blackening and mm -hmm. the premiere was in harlem and the audience was almost exclusively black and the director just spoke to us before and was like you know pretend you're watching this movie in your house with your family and so we were all interact the movie was meant to be that way and that's how we were interacting with the movie we're like yelling for them not to go into you know it's the stereotypes <laughs> of like watching a scary movie and so we're telling them don't go in there don't follow that sound and then they would kind of affirm what we were yelling it was one of the best experiences but then i saw it again with friends in like midtown and it was just quiet. And I was like, maybe this movie isn't as good as I thought it was because I, you know, the interaction was totally different. The audience does make a difference because I've seen movies at Comic Con where you get to see it before everybody, you get to see it with the audience, and then like I'll watch it again with a different crowd, and I was like, oh, why is it not so much fun this time around? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Flash was like that with me when I saw the Flash. One, we didn't. We didn't think it was done. So the CGI was for us not an issue because they made a big hullabaloo about like the CGI is not finished. Yeah. So like that wasn't something we were considering. So when we left, we were everybody during the entire movie was having such a good time. You know what I mean? And then after when I saw the reviews, I was like, everybody hates it. I need to rewatch this movie. Like it's not what I remembered. And I rewatched it. I was like, okay, I kind of get it. I let. I let the hype get to me. I let Michael Keaton. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we watch the unedited version too. Because <laughs> I don't think they ever finished the special effects on that movie. <laughs> they were like, whatever. Uh, just send it out. It felt that way. Like when I, I watched it again, I was like, I can't believe they put this out. Yeah. Like the baby. This out before and Ezra kills somebody again. Or they're does like, crazy. God, they're like, for the love of God, we can't, we can't do another. <laughs> We can't make it a little more. Oh, my God. Um, okay. I'm so sorry. I do want to put this shot up just because it's cool. Um, but I wanted to ask, because we were, like, writing down the last 10 minutes. Um, what do you think happened to the protagonist in the end? Or do you think it doesn't matter? Do you think that he died? Do you think he just passed out? Do you think this is, like, sequel worthy? Like, what are your thoughts on the ending? I don't know if there will be a sequel because it feels like a very com complete uh, movie, but they did leave that there was another politician there that we never got to see and he was going to become president or something like that, right? So yeah. they left enough in there for a sequel, but it's also a complete enough story where you're satisfied with the way it ended, even if it doesn't get one. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And um, in the story, Hanuman is immortal. So I feel like they were also maybe doing like a nod to that of like, you, you know how John Wick literally could be he, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thousands of times and he's still alive. <laughs> like, I just feel like that was kind of the, the nod and you never really see him die on screen. So then there is this potential. Um, I personally would love if there's not a sequel because I just need to see Dave in other things. Like he needs to be back in cinema. And like this project was like, consuming him for so long that he wasn't able to take on roles um so selfishly i don't want there to be a sequel because i want him in like so many other shows and tv and movies but um i wouldn't hate it if there was one <laughs> i agree like when i saw it i felt a little bit of relief because i like films that are just films like everything everywhere all at once is like one of my favorite films of all mm. time and one thing i love about it is it's a film you know, which is like very much A24 as a whole, but like it's a film that you watch. It's beautiful. It's funny. You know, the scenes are incredible, but it's just a film for you to enjoy without them like trying to monetize on everything. But I did notice that he let that politician go. He looked him in the eyes and let him run. So I was like, is he going to come back and get and he won, right? That guy won, right? I don't like, know if he, he won or if it was election time. Like, and that's why there was like rallies and stuff. But um, there's that shot where like he actually turns his back and then you see him running away behind him. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I feel like what Neves is saying is like, 
yeah, he got away, but he's like still back of mind, you know, like he may not be the priority in this moment, but he's definitely a, a pawn in the game. So, yeah. So they, they weren't celebrating uh, Diwali. They were. They were. They were. It so just I thought that was the election. At yeah, the same it, time. they just had it happen at the same time. Okay, so the election didn't happen. I don't know if he won. Did they say? For they never sure? said he won. The, the election was happening uh, um, the day everything happened. So we never find out if he won. The election was okay. that day. Happy. I yeah. thought that. Yeah, I thought they were celebrating him winning. Uh, no, I think it was like you know those rich people uh, gatherings, you know, where they're like, let me thank all my donors kind of situations. Like, yeah, that's what it felt yeah. like. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, because I was like, they're all in the same place. This is crazy. Like, yeah. enjoying <laughs> themselves. Um, so I thought he won. Um, and I knew it was like, I thought it was Diwali because I saw them like, is it costumes? Or like, they, they had on like, face mask and things like that. And they were dancing. Yeah. They had a whole scene where they were showing. Um, all I know from Diwali is from Sex in the City and The Office. Those are right two. Yeah, <laughs> those are right two references. <laughs> There's a know. lot more than than what those shows tell you. About yeah, I, I don't know if Mindy Kaling should be my <laughs> should be my, probably not probably not probably not should be my pioneer <laughs> for it. But that was how I was first introduced to it. Um, so I was like, oh, I know what Duali is, and then I was like, Frankie, do you? <laughs> do, you, do, you actually, do you actually um so what was your final thoughts what's anything that was pressing that you really was like i need people to know or look out for this when they see it or if they go for a we watch oh um i was just gonna say about the diwali scene um i have like two breakdowns right now on my page not to plug myself but it also is just gonna help a lot of people <laughs> I mean, no, it's just, it's exactly what you're saying, right? It's like, maybe people's preconceived notion of Diwali are, is that episode of The Office, and it has, like, absolutely no information as to why it's important in this movie. Um, so I had two really informative videos on, like, why that climax sequence is so important, and having it take place on Diwali um, is, like, integral to the story. Um, and then one, as well, that kind of relates all of the Ramayana references, the story that inspired Dave to tell this um awesome action film through the lens of hanuman um so i would recommend checking those out if you like are really curious to know more about like parts of the story in the film yeah i did want to bring this note in because i totally forgot he went through this whole thing dyed his mask <laughs> looking super fucking cool and before he even throws his first punch he takes it off and i was like dev wants us to know that he's doing his stunts mm, yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah for sure like but I don't know. I I thought the I thought any even the black mask. I thought the monkey mask in general was very cool. Yeah, yeah I yeah. I thought I interpreted this of like um, he whipped it off so quickly because he it's not him hiding anymore. Like before he was like kind of lurking in the shadows or like watching from afar. Um, and now he's like I'm ready to be a part of this action. Like I'm here to whoop ass. So yeah. that's kind of what I thought that was about. Yeah. I definitely saw like the, this was one of my favorite scenes as well. Like when he returns to the ring and like the confidence and the way he's sitting, like I'm about to beat your ass, like bring whoever you oh my got. God. The, the chest beat. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. And I, I do not like monkey imagery. Okay. <laughs> Period. I'm not, I'm not a fan of monkeys and anything, especially with dark. Like I know they're Indian, but they're, they're dark. You know what I mean? Like the people in this were, are my color, but I was feeling it. Like <laughs> I was feeling every single moment and I just threw out whatever culturally I feel about monkeys away immediately. And I think the intro helped with that a lot. Like, to conceptualize like who Hanuman is. Um, yeah. But yes, when he's in this ring and he's essentially feral and he fights Andre the Giant, mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like I, I, I was definitely, also I was like, Dev is, he's a different, I think whatever roles he takes from now on is gonna be totally different, right? Because now he's yeah. a heartthrob and like an action star and that's just something else he can layer on acting that we already knew was good yeah 100 percent. totally agree and i also love the fact that like like brown men we don't have a lot of imagery like this we don't come off badass where the 
nerd or the tech and stuff like that. So to see somebody in this role to be shown with so much like dignity and also like badass, you know, uh, imagery is really, really cool. And like, he's really setting the standard for us a little bit, right? He's, he's pushing us forward and I really appreciate him for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's raising the bar, Neves. This is a lot of pressure. Wait till my <laughs> wait, wait, wait till my show comes down. Then we'll, we'll I'll bring it back down. I'll bring it back down no. where it's meant to be. <laughs> you said we're supposed to be. <laughs> I'm gonna push us back a few years. <laughs> yeah. God, Neves, come on! You're I believe in you. I believe. <laughs> Neves, you're tall though. That's half the work. I'm I'm like. 510 are on a you? good day. Yeah, I'm not super tall. I that's always tall. think someone for me than me. Yeah. I, are you tall, Jeff? I'm I'm no. tall. I'm five seven with incredible posture. Like so people think I'm like five nine. Uh, so I'm it's, five three with terrible posture. So no, no, no. <laughs> shorter, I fear. You're gonna be I'm I'm cursed that all my friends are short. And so, like, I'm just, I just look like a giant around everyone. Um, but Neves does it. So when I met Neves, I know like, oh, Neves is a giant with me. Maybe, uh, maybe that's because you expect brown people, like Indian people, to be short, and then I'm just like slightly taller. So you're like, really, all of the. Okay, so the I know three, like personally, closely, I know three of them, and they're very tall. Okay, I know three Indian men, and they were very tall. Um. But they all kind of look like, um, oh boy, Rob from iZombie. I forgot his name. Yeah, Rahul Kohli. Yes. Um, yep. He's yeah. another one I think could do a good action movie. Like, I feel yeah, like yeah, you could yeah, put yeah. him in an action movie and he would kill it. He'd be a great Constantine. Yeah. Wasn't he in Star Wars? Am I thinking of someone else? I, I, I think he, uh, which I'm call it, did a video where he talked about he wanted to be in Star Wars, but he never oh, okay. actually was uh, announced in anything. Got yeah, it. he has a what's the word? Not an eeriness, but he has a mystery. Yeah. yeah, even even <laughs> when he's playing someone fun and playful, there's just, maybe it's the accent. Um, but something about it, I was like, I like that. Also, I did forget this about uh, Monkey Man. I realized that Dev did change his accent to be different than everyone else that was on the film the second time I watched it. Um, and I don't know if that's something similar to India. I noticed when I was in England, you can tell where someone's from and what class they're in by their accent. Um, and I felt like in the little dialogue that we got from Kid, it was showing that he was from a lower class or from a place that like didn't mesh well with the people in the club. Um, do you think that was intentional? Because um, Dev Patel is British, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Um, did I? Is, am I making that up or? I, no. I think uh, I. I don't know. Uh, I didn't notice an accent change, but but I wasn't really looking for it. But I feel like yeah. dialect change is more noticeable than like accent change because people can have different dialects and it could be like, oh, they're from Punjab. They're from South India. They're from this place. Uh, so that's more noticeable to me. Not so much the accent. I, I don't know if I could tell from just an accent alone without the dialect where someone's from. I don't know. What about you, Shiv? I think that he um, just sounds more American, unfortunately, compared to uh, the rest of the people that are speaking more British Indian English. Um, I know that doesn't make any sense, but because I know India, what you mean, I know exactly British, what you mean. Yeah, in India, they learn British English, so like, yeah. which is funny because Dave is British, but that's not the the way that he delivered his dialogues. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't notice it as much. My big problem was that I wish more of the movie was in Hindi. It didn't make any sense to me why like a religious leader speaking to only brown people would be speaking English. Like absolutely mm. not. I don't know if you've seen this TikTok recently about native speakers speaking nat their native language to <laughs> other native speakers. Yeah. Um, but I'm assuming because it's made for Western audiences, they don't want to put too much of it in Hindi. Um, but I, I, that just kind of took me out of it of like, uh, and then I also felt like we needed subtitles sometimes because British English some is really hard to understand for me sometimes. Um, that or they were like mumbling it. And I was just like, what are we saying? On? So, yeah. Yeah. Especially when we see um, like kid interacting with uh, his partner in crime on in the club or like the only time I heard Hindi was oh, and I'm assuming it's Hindi yeah. was when Singh was yelling at him. 
or like, yeah. but it, it felt like he was doing it to say, to me, I was interpreting it as he was like talking down to him. And that's why he wasn't speaking English. Yes. Um, yeah. Like also, he would he be like, cursing. get out of here and stuff. And he was cursing that I, that I got. Yeah. <laughs> I there were definitely some really bad words. <laughs> yeah. so I, I could definitely get the vitriol from whatever he was saying. Um, And hear me out, Shiv. I thought he was handsome too. I, he was a deplorable <laughs> guy. <laughs> I was with you. Andy. That's your type. <laughs> Deplorable and <laughs> devilishly handsome. That's your type. <laughs> I was I was like, what's going on here? What like what is he trying to say? I didn't it was very it was a very confusing time for me. It's I'm that like, mustache, man. It it's is. the mustache. <laughs> His build is obviously like way more of an action build than Dave yeah. Patel's too. So I feel like you naturally are just like, yeah, that guy could kick his ass, you know? Dave like, yeah. definitely went for the Bruce Lee lean look when he came yeah. and he decided to build his body up for this. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think it, there's but so big that Dave, Dave, you know, like he's 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 tall and kind of lanky um, versus this guy was a bit shorter and like more of a brood. Uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's my type. Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> Let me go to my therapist and understand. Why, <laughs> <laughs> why was I feeling this man? I was like. Uh, and he's a cop too, Frankie. Come he's on. He's a now. cop. He's, oh my yeah. God. He's a Come dirty on. cop. He's like the head of the dirty cops. This guy is a cab, even in, 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 in India. India. <laughs> in India, he was a cab. Especially in India. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cause I was like, man, this is they're letting me know how bad the cops are. You should not like this guy. Like, as soon as yeah. the cops rolled up on him when the car crash had, they pulled a club out. Um, which looked really heavy and painful compared to like the clubs that I'm used to seeing like a wooden club or like in America we use the uh yeah it was a field hockey baton. stick I think is what it was, they were using or, or a lacrosse stick or something like that field, right field hockey is a very popular sport in India in Pakistan really? it's like it's actually one of their like top sports it's like up there with cricket it's like a it's not even a like here like they think of it as a girl sport over there it's like a legitimate sport and yeah. basketball is actually a girl sport over there which is really interesting it's hilarious it's becoming a girl sport here I think yeah <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so I know I only have a couple minutes. Um, I'll let you guys. I don't know. Do you guys do one through five or one through ten when you rate? I do a through like a report card A B C D. <laughs> okay, but well, <'cause>, <laughs> like, who does that? Because <laughs> people can't hate on it. There's so much ways to hate on it, and I feel yeah. like this. What do you is mean? Good. If you say it's a C, they're gonna hate on you. What are you talking about? I'll give it a C plus just to make oh them happy. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, I'll okay. grade on a curve. That's what that's what the point five is for. Like yeah. if you say five point five or ten point so five, I have yeah. never heard that. Music. I do report cards. I do like I'm giving this movie. That's an so a. brown of you. You're like, I, was I have to give it a letter grade. <laughs> I have to give it an A because as the brown person, it'll be disappointing to get a B plus. You can't disappoint brown oh, parents. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, an A is also a disappointment. It should be an A plus, but A plus. <laughs> so you give it an A. What about you, Shiv? What do you give it? Um, on Letterbox, I gave it a four out of five, so I'll go with that. Um, yeah. I did have some problems with it, so it wasn't like top notch for me, but I absolutely loved it. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I gave it five. It was my favorite movie that I've seen this year. Dune was up oh. there, but Dune, I think I liked more cinematically, like the experience. Like this, I think it was just the general surprise of it. Um, I'm really, I grew up on Kung Fu movies. Um, I'll give you guys a lecture when we have more time about Black people in New York and Kung Fu movies. Mm. Um and so I it, it for me, this is like a movie made for Frankie. I'm like, listen, you're advocating for women and trans people. You're like <laughs> doing all this stuff. I need to, you know, so I really enjoyed it. But um I I'm so grateful the two of you guys came and had some fun with me. Um, I would love to have you guys here again, maybe not for this, but like House of the Dragon or something else that we could yeah. be messy for. Um <laughs> I'm a huge fan of both of you and I really appreciate both of you coming um, for the last minute. Please tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, we'll start with you, Shiv. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at chivalry underscore Inc. That's chivalry spelled S H I V A L R Y. Amazing. And neat. 
Uh, you can find me everywhere at Toys R Soul, which is at Watch It <laughs> Meebs. Uh, I am on TikTok. I am on Instagram. I am on Twitter. And I have a YouTube channel called Salam Nerds, where we kind of do the same thing. We talk about representation in media and talk about all the TV shows. We do more of a recap episodes. And we also do reality TVs. Or if you're into hot trash TV, uh, hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, and if you guys are new here, um, my name is Fantastic Frankie. I'm on all platforms at Fantastic Frankie. I just saw someone hopped in. Don't worry. This is on. This is going to be on my YouTube. So if you miss this incredible reviews with my incredible guests, they'll, it'll still exist on YouTube. So you can check it out later. Um, thank you all for coming. And thank you both for joining me. I had an amazing time. Thank you for having us. Appreciate Bye. it. <laughs>